Hello and welcome to our number talk. Today we are looking at the expression 12 times 15. What we do in number talks is we take an expression and we use mental math. That means no paper, no pencil to try to figure it out. We keep track of the strategy we use because there's many different ways to figure out 12 times 15. So before we go any further, let's do that now. Pause the video, figure out what 12 times 15 is without paper and pencil, Unpause the video, we will look at our strategies together. All right, so when we get started, we're going to get started with our distributive property. There's many different ways that we can use this distributive property, which lets us break apart one of our factors. So in this case, we took our factor of 12, and we broke it up into a 6 plus 6. So let's look at it like this. Instead of 12 times 15, it's really 6 plus 6 times 15. We're going to take that 15. We're still going to multiply it by both of those add-ins, but we're going to make partial products now. So instead of 12 times 15, it's going to be 6 times 15. And then we're going to add that to our 6 times 15. So 6 times 15 is a little bit easier. That's going to be 90 and 90, so hopefully you got your answer of 180. So we just added 90 and 90, and we got 180. We can take the distributive property. We can still look at uh, breaking up our 12, but instead of breaking it in half, we are going to take our 12, and we are going to break it up into place value. Think of expanded form. So this 12 is really a 10 plus 2 times 15. We're still going to distribute this 15 out to both the 10 and the 2 to make some partial products. So it's going to be 10 times 15, right? So that's going to be 150. And then we're going to take our 2 times 15. And that's going to be our 30 using this area model. We still get it our 180. Obviously, our answer is not going to change. But you see how it's a little bit different when we break it up by place value. Now we have the distributive property. But we're going to keep our 12 together. This time, let's break up that other factor. Let's break up that 15. Let's break it up into place value. So you see we have our 10 and our 5. So it's going to be 12 times 10 plus 5. So when you're having this two-digit by two-digit multiplication, sometimes you can break up both factors in different ways. So we're going to distribute that out. That is going to be a 12 times 10. And that's pretty easy. Not only is it a fact, it's also multiplied by 10, which makes it super easy, 120. And then we're going to add, remember it's partial products, we're going to add that 12 times 5. And that is going to get us our 60. Once again, we're still getting 180, but that's just another way to figure this out. Now, this is a slightly different one. We're still going to get our same answer, but I wanted to show you just even a different way to break this up because some of us might be familiar with our 12s. We're going to break up our 15 again, but instead of breaking it up by place value, let's break it up into 12 plus 3. You might be thinking, why would I want to do 12 plus 3? Well, because most of us know 12 times 12. That might be the largest fact that we memorized. So if we say, well, that's 12 times 12, that's going to be our partial product. Most of us can rattle that off. We can say 144. And then we just need to add this other 12 times 3, 36. We need to add that 144 and 36. We need to carry a little bit, but we're still going to get our same answer of 180. Now, doubling and halving is another good strategy. So even if distributive property doesn't work, we can double and half. So let's take our 12 times 15. And what we're going to do is we're going to keep a balanced equation. We're going to take one of our factors. We're going to cut it in half. So in this case, we're going to take our 12. We're going to cut it in half. And we're only going to take 6. So that's why we've got this gray box down here. So in order to keep a balanced equation, if we divide one of our factors by 2, we can double the other factor. So let's double 15. You notice I've got two 15s. So now I'm going to get 30. So if I double one, have the other, it's still a balanced equation. 
And this is pretty easy. 6 times 3 is going to be 18. So we're going to add that 0. We know multiplying by multiples of 10, 100, or 1,000 is pretty simple. Still gets us 180, but doubling and halving can sometimes make it really, really quick. So let's look at the associative property. Now this is a property we haven't seen. This is the grouping property. So what this associative property does is this lets us group our factors in a different way. So we are going to take this 12 times 15. And we're going to say, you know what, that 12 is really a 3 times 4. And it's different than the distributive property because we're not going to add anything. We're just going to keep it as three factors we're multiplying. So it's really 3 times 4 times 15. But what the associative property lets us do is change the groups. We are simply going to shift our parentheses. So take a look. I'm just going to write the same thing. I'm just going to do like this. Notice how I kept the factors the same. This also works with addition when you have three add-ins. Keep the factors the same. So now I've got three groups of four groups of 15. So here are my four groups of 15. I've got one, I've got two, I've got three, I've got four groups of 15, which really just makes 60. And then I've got three of those groups of four groups of 16. So I'm skip counting by 60s. So I've got 60, 120, 180. So you can take one of your factors and break it apart into two smaller factors and then change the groups. We can also look at the uh, associative and the commutative property. So we know the associative property is the grouping property. So let's take a look at this. We've got our 12 times 15. And in this case, we're going to keep our 12. Let's break up our 15 into oh, 5 times 3. So that's going to be our group that we are keeping together. But what we want to do is we want to go ahead and shift that parentheses. Let's shift those parentheses over to the left. So let's say it's 12 times 5. So really I've got 12 groups of 5, and then I've got three sets of the 12 groups of 5. But I want to I want to switch the order just because I know that I can use the order, which is, remember, that's our commutative property. That's the order property. I want to switch it so that I've got my three groups up front, because that's what I'm used to writing, three groups of... 12 groups of 5, but oh, 12 groups of 5 is a lot to write. So you know what? I also know that 12 times 5 is the same as 5 times 12. I'm going to use the commutative property again a second time. I want to get these factors looking correct. There we go. Three groups of 5 groups of 12. So here we go. I've got 5 groups of 12. So that is going to, right here is my 5 groups of 12. So that's going to be... 60 again. I just got there a different way. And then I've got my three groups of five groups of 12. So I'm going to skip count by 60. I've still got my 180. So those are all the different ways that you can find 12 times 15 that we're going to see in this video. If you found another way that is fantastic, go ahead and drop that as a comment on the video. Teachers, if you would like a copy of the slide deck for your own use, you can find it on my website, 5minutemath.net.